just the sun was so strong today. I, I... No. <laughs> uh, we've got a, an action-packed show lined up this week. Uh, dozens of people watch, watching already. Yeah. I don't know what we're doing right. All we're doing is talking, <laughs> t- talking whiskey. Maybe it's my healthy red glow. <laughs> I've got a touch of sunburn. <laughs> Have you? That's why I've got the light thrown full here so you can't see. Uh, what, did you fall asleep in the back garden after having a few, did you? No, 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 no. It's just the sun was so strong today. I, I was out and about uh, doing socially distanced exercise uh, precaution. But uh, I, w- I was about and it was just it was so warm. Um, and then I was sitting out looking for this rocket, which I never saw. Um, yeah, too far to sleep, apparently. Well... Tell me this and tell me no more. What are we doing this week on the show? We're going to do whiskey styles. Now, this is not uh, whiskey regions. You know, it's not Scotch and Irish and that kind of thing. It's different styles of whiskey that all fall within the definition of what whiskey is. Okay? So we go, what is a single malt? Because some people get very confused between single malt and single cask and... Uh, the, the, what's a blend and this kind of thing. So we'll just talk through the different styles, not pretty much all of them uh, as such, you know. Okay, and what are the styles? Single malt, is that the same as a one pot, is it? No, no. Um, right, we'll start and we'll do single malt. So I, I've left it out. Really the only really well established so far single malt. Um, that makes malt whiskey, and that's Bush Mills. So this is the Bush Mills 10-year-old single malt. Now, so what is a single malt? Single malt means it has to be made with 100% malted barley from one distillery. Okay? So that's all that, that means. Now, it says 10 years old. So this is the age statement, okay? Which means... The youngest whiskey in this is 10 years old. What they do is they take barrels of different aged whiskies and they blend from that one distillery to produce this bottle. So there could be 20 year old whiskey in here, but they're not allowed to say that. They have to say the youngest whiskey. So this is a 10 year old single malt. So why, would they, why would they do that? Why would they put older whiskey in, Marty, and, and not be allowed to say? Because what they could do is flip it round and put a teaspoon of 21-year-old whiskey in and claim that it's 21-year-old whiskey when the majority of it is maybe only 10 years old. So it has to be the youngest whiskey. But in order to get the flavour and taste that they want, they will put older whiskies in. Now, you have to remember that Whiskey's not a standardised product. It's got so many variables that the flavour profiles, etc., etc., really are quite different. So in order for a blender to get the flavour they want, they might have to put in 15, 20-year-old whiskey. The chances of them putting 20 year olds is probably fairly slim, but it's, it's just I'm using that as an example. So they will use older whiskies, but they have to, by law, state the youngest whiskey that's there. So 10-year-old could have much older whiskey in it. So this is Bushmills, um, sort of entry-level single malt. And, and it's okay, it's okay. What do you hear what some people are saying already tonight? Uh, somebody saying, is that the ba- is, that, is that the black bush you're holding up? I don't think it was. It, was it's, it there, no? No, this is a 10-year-old single malt. Ten-year-old single mart. Yes, yes. Uh, John Conley was asking that there, and uh, somebody was saying there. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, it, this is what Charlene Blackburn's saying. This is what she's saying. Amazing guys. Tonight is a perfect night for a single malt bush mills. You're quite correct, Charlene. Well done. Why is that? Because because it's a hot night. Uh, just be, any night essentially is a good night. <laughs> 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 Charlene, Charlene, I know likes a little vino. I know Charlene, and Charlene likes a little vino. Um, and I'm glad that she's now uh, uh, elevating herself and moving on to proper whiskey. You know, hold on, hold on. We've got a comedian on tonight. John no, Conley I... sit, says it's my fault. Sorry, the screen is too small. Now listen, the sports start next week. Tell no. the wife you've got to get a new TV and get a TV <laughs> this size, and then we'll be bigger than normal. Right, yeah. you know, the way when you see things bigger than normal on the TV, it scares you. 
yeah. a bit like my bake. Well, I, oh, yes. I, I, I might closer further away. I'll sit further away, and then I'll get smaller, and Marty will get bigger. Should we do that? <laughs> no, 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 no. My big red feet. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll make Marty bigger. I'll make Marty bigger, John. Here we go. I'll make him bigger. There he's bigger, and I'm smaller. I, I'm like a leprechaun. Just put your hand up and pet my head there. I'm just below, <laughs> below your left hand. hand. There, there, down a bit more. There you go. Now, John. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yes, the screen can be a bit small and the definition can go, but at least it's not as bad as the girls that are on before us and everyone's in the mirror image and they're like playing with their left hands. <laughs> but uh, listen, we, we, you can rewind this when it's over, but we're talking styles of whiskey tonight. Mm-hmm. Marty's just gone through the single malt. Welcome along to uh, Dean O'Leary and Sherman Wright as, w- uh, as well. He's saying, this is what sh- uh, Sherman's saying, listening in tonight and looking forward to hearing some great insights. He doesn't but, know what we're, he doesn't know what we're going to say, Marty. No, well, the, the, I will try and be as insightful as possible. <laughs> so, We've, we've covered single malt. Um, as I say, single malt, lots of guys would consider single malt the, the, sort of the, the premier whiskey. And in some ways, yes, okay, but it's not necessarily... Uh, in some ways, it's kind of a little bit disrespectful to all the other styles of whiskey because they all have different elements. And single malts are seen as being the premier, but... Um, blended whiskies make up for 90% of seals. So blended whiskies are actually much, much more popular, really because they are an awful lot cheaper. Okay. But we'll get back. This is a blend, but we'll get back to blended whiskies in a little minute. Okay. Next one I want to go to, we will go to pot still whiskey. Okay. This is Method and Madness. Put still. Put still whiskey is unique to Ireland. It has to be made in Ireland. And it comes from the late 1800s. There was a malt tax introduced. And from that, the distillers started to make um, a mash bill. what, What I mean by mash bill is if you have a mash bill of 100% malted barley. All you're using is malt, malted barley. If you want to add in other grains, and remember, whiskey has to be made from grains, okay? It has to be made from a cereal. So if you want to change the mash bill, you want to put in unmalted barley. They've brought in the tax on, on malt. So in order to reduce cost, the distillers made up a a mix, a mash bill of malted and unmalted barley to bring the price down. And what they found was it created a different style of whiskey. It created a, a whiskey that was had a little bit different flavour and a, a slightly peppery finish to it, and it was kind of unique. So they experimented around with lots of different um, grains. So they used oats, they would have used uh, wheat, rye, uh, corn, etc., etc. So they, they would have used different ones. These days, um, Irish whiskey, pot still Irish whiskey, sorry, is a PGA product. It is, it's a protected geographical indication and it has to come from Ireland and it has to meet the, the technical file now. So the mash bill has to be a minimum of. 30% malted barley, uh, a minimum of 30% unmalted barley, and you can have up to 5% other cereals. So you can have a few percent um, rye or something in there as well. So it gives an awful lot of different um, mash bills, different outcomes, different recipes and so on and so forth. This one, this is Method and Madness. And this is this is a very interesting one actually because it's from it's it's from Middleton. Um, it's from the Irish distillers, so these are kind of the experimental range, and this is finished in French chestnut, not your traditional wow. 
not your traditional oak. So it started off, it's done in, it's matured in sherry and bourbon casks, and then finished off in French chestnut, uh, which is real, real sort of break from tradition. And it's, re it's really quite interesting. It's really quite good. It, it has a different signature taste to it. Very familiar, but different at the same time. So I, I would recommend, uh, if you haven't tried this, hunt down a bottle of it um, and, and give it a whirl because it is something different, you know. Now, so, some of the comments coming in, uh, Marty, here are, are, are very highly complimentary. Uh, uh, Alistair Minnis is saying, evening, gents. Uh, evening to you, Alistair. Remember, we're watching uh, in the UK and Ireland. It's uh, 13 minutes past 10, British summertime, and that time in Portugal as well. But, of course, if you're watching in America, it's far earlier on in the day. And if you're watching in continental Europe, well, it's far later at night. But you're just about to go out the door. If you were allowed out, of course. Uh, uh, Dean Martin is saying, Marty, seriously, how do you know all this stuff? They, um, they don't realise there's a big production crew feeding you all this in front of you and they can't see it. Isn't that right? All my prep work, all my, my huge amount of prep work, um, which was essentially, um, I was sitting out about 20 minutes ago, sitting out the front, hoping to see a space rocket. <laughs> it's just sounded bizarre. Sitting out the front, trying to see a space rocket, and then I come running in here to get this set up, this this sort of set up. Um, I, I I enjoy a drink, and I uh, I, I like. I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd. I'm a whiskey nerd, so I, that's why I know all this stuff. You know. All right, and uh, you you'll be pleased to know that uh, uh, John Connolly is now. Uh, watching on the big screen he's happy now he can see the balls uh, so we'll say evening to you john i love your hat john uh, you can't see it unless you're watching on the laptop there but john has got a very summery hat on and he's, he says he's watching from this place linlithgow where's linlithgow wheels is it no? i don't i don't know but i'm go I'm, I'm gonna go i'm gonna google it i'm gonna <laughs> google it so as we know where <laughs> Lin linlithgow is don't spoil the magic, Justin. Just go and say, oh, I knew you all along. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I knew all along. All right. Uh, uh, Philip Orr is saying uh, brilliant as well tonight. Uh, so we're oh. talking uh, this evening, we're talking styles of whiskey. Of we have, we, we've done, uh, it's near Edinburgh. There we go. You should know that, Marty. It's near, it, 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 must, it must be south of Edinburgh. And I'm it's the place that nobody ever goes. Oh, no, it's... <laughs> Uh, sorry, Sherman, right? He must be an American. Is he an American? And he knows where it is. It, he says it's just a mile from Sterling. So, sir, it gets overshadowed, does it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, folks. We'll, we'll know for next week. We'll Google it before we say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've done the two two main styles here. We've done uh, the uh, single malt and we've done the one pot. Pot still. The pot still whiskies, you will hear an awful lot more about. I've said this, I said this um, not last week, the week before. You'll see an awful lot more pot still as as, as there's more of an appreciation for it. Uh, lots of people in, in Ireland don't even know about it. They don't they don't know that this is basically our champagne. But this is this is where uh, Irish whiskey will be going. And there'll be a much bigger demand for this in the States, especially within the next few years so get yourself familiarized with it uh hunt down a few bottles uh people will they're kind of used to it but they don't actually realize that they're, they're drinking it in some ways the, the likes of some of the, the pars three swallows would be uh pot still uh you have green spot and stuff there there these are pot still working so you will you'll hear more of them be an awful lot more brands of it coming online very shortly okay so, the next one, I'm going to just do this. This is a single cask whiskey. Now, this is not a style, but this, I want to point out that people get very confused between single cask and single malt. People think single malt whiskey is basically a single cask, and it's not. Single cask whiskies, and this is the fabulous, this is really good. Writer's Tears, okay? Cognac finished single cask, okay? Wow, wow. What has happened with this is they have 
basically cask number 6430, and they have lifted it out of the cask and bottled it straight away. Pick a cask that they think is of the highest quality, essentially, and they put it in. Now, normally when people make single cask whiskies, this is them showing off as good as they can get, okay? So you, you, you'll try and get your best stuff, if you like. This is this is your shop front stuff. This will always be, because it's single cask, very limited. So there's only 576 bottles of this. That's bottled at 46%. This, this I can't remember the price of this. It was like £85 or something. Um, as you can tell, I, I quite like this. Uh, but there, lots of the distilleries now are bringing out single cask offerings. And it really is, as I say, the, the, it's their sort of blue ribbon or the showpiece events. That, um, but single cask is not single malt. Okay, so I know people sometimes get confused by that. So I, I hope that clears that up. You know, I hope it sort of, you understand what I mean by that, you know? Yeah. Okay. Hey. We're getting questions in already tonight. They're coming thick and fast tonight, Murray. I'm going to try and keep up with them as we go along tonight because otherwise we end up with too many at the end. No uh, and Julie Mason has said here, she has said, uh, we'll have to see if any single pot still is available in the States. Uh, curious here. I, I, is it not across the pond yet? It should be. You should probably be able to get some of the better known brands. It might take a little bit of looking. Um, you would need to probably look in some of the specialist uh, liquor stores over in, in the US. Uh, if you look for probably the Spot series, the Green Spot, Yellow Spot, Red Spot, um, the Pars, uh, Pars Three Swallows, for example, these are pot still whiskies. Um, you will see an awful lot more of them uh, as as it becomes that sort of Irish brand. You'll you'll start to see an awful lot more pot still whiskey uh, being being pushed and made available. Just currently at the minute, there just isn't the volume of it. There isn't enough uh, pot still whiskey in Ireland really to supply huge demand over in, in the likes of the states. It just wouldn't. It's just not there. So. Um, uh, you'll see an awful lot more of it, but it should be available at, at some of the lectures. So you just have to look out for it. Okay, now I've seen a theme here tonight, and it, it's frightening me a wee bit. Uh, and and this theme is this, Marty, because I happen to notice that everything tonight is called single, right? Uh -huh. So so you have yeah. single single malt, single pot still, right, mm -hmm. and uh, single cask. What's yes. that all about? Is this to do with the fact that we're all going to be single forever now because <laughs> of of the coronavirus? Is, is that it? Well, single single pot still. It used to be called pure pot still, okay? But the Food and Dr Drug Administration in the US didn't like this because pure pot still implied that other whiskies weren't pure. So they said you can't use the word pure. Uh, so, so essentially what they did was they thought, well, we need to come up with another word. Uh, so they said single pot still whiskey. Uh, and that's how that came. It was basically by association that that's how that came about. So it was, it, it's a bit like why they had to change the spelling of iron brew, because it's not brewed. And the Food and Drug Administration in the US said, well, if it's not brewed, you can't call it iron brew. So they then spelled it with <laughs> BRU instead of BRE. <laughs> you know, so it's basically it was to do with sort of economic factors. That's why. Um, but but you can understand single cask, obviously, it's from a single cask, and single malt means it's basically from a single distillery. So that's that's why that connection came about. Okay. It's always when you when you hear the true story behind things, you're always amazed by it, aren't you? <laughs> you are a bit, yes. <laughs> things things are a bit. Strange at times, you know. Um, yeah, but that's that's how that came about. Uh, it, well, it's not any real. It's it's a deliberate thing, but it's kind of was forced on them. If you know what I mean. Okay. Now let me guess. The fourth thing on the agenda tonight is not going to be called single. It's going to be called double. Is it? Make mine a double? No. No, it's still single. <laughs> 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 this this is a this is a fairly sort of new. Uh, if you like 
And this is single grain. This is Glendalough single grain whiskey. Okay. Okay. Now, grain whiskey is it's it's often seen as being the sort of lesser brother of of uh, malted whiskey. You'll have seen the the, the little pot stills. You know the sort of uh, the uh, uh, the wee pot stills, the wee fat belly and the wee line arm and stuff over the top of them. You know what I mean. You know that sort of very decorative, ornamental shape still. That is a pot still. Now when you make whiskey in a pot still, you have to get your, your, your beer, if you like, your, your wort and boil it up in batches. Okay? So it has to be boiled up in batches. Now, a very clever man who was a, a, a tax inspector called Aeneas Kofi way back at the start, not the very start, but the start of the 19th century, invented a thing called the continuous still, a Kofi still. And what you'll see is it's a column. And it basically can work 24-7. Okay? Now, when you distill from a, a wee fat pot still and it pops out, it comes out about 70, so 72% alcohol okay abv in a column still you constantly you can supply it all the time and it goes in layers and comes out the top but it comes out at much higher percentage it comes out about 92.5 percent abv but it's much much less flavorsome it doesn't have the same amount of flavor that a pot still has but it's much cheaper okay it's because you can continually use it, it becomes it comes out much cheaper. Okay. Now, single grains mean it can be whiskey distilled by. It can have corn, wheat, rye, any of these sort of um, um, mash bills. But a lot of the time, a lot of the time they will use um, different different cereals. Because, but your end product doesn't have huge amount of flavour because it's mainly all just ethanol. Now it gets watered down, and where you're relying on the flavour coming from is really the cask. The cask has to be really top notch, if I'm honest. So it has to be. This is finished in bourbon oloroso sherry. I have to check these things because I keep getting slightly confused as to what one is. So this is Glen de Luck. You can see St. Kevin there with his wee bird. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the story of St. Kevin is actually really quite funny because he was, he, he was a total misogynist. <laughs> he, he, was a it was, he was a horrible man. Um, he had a he, kitchen, didn't he? <laughs> he, was, he, was so, he was so devout that the bird just to come and land on him. That was, that's the point. Uh, All right. Now, Glen, Glendalough, if you've ever been to Glendalough, it's a beautiful place. And it's basically... It's basically like a, a, a religious city. It's fabulous. But uh, it's based around St. Kevin. Glendalough did a, a series of adverts a few years ago. You can get them on YouTube. And it's all about St. Kevin. And it's like a massive stage production. It's it's really quite it's fun to watch. You know, you should maybe link it at the end of this. Um, but this is a single grain whiskey. Uh, as I say, it, what they try to do with this is reliant on the, the cask finishes to try and get the cask to impart because the actual spirit itself doesn't carry a huge amount of character. So this you'll see, you'll probably not see this pushed anywhere near the same as pot still, but it gives a different flavour. It has a, a, lighter a lighter taste to it. Um, and as I say, it's very much reliant on the casks so it's not as complex in many ways, but still a different style, different thing to try, different thing to familiarize yourself with. Um, again, if you're a whiskey purist, if you're if you're somebody who wants to try all the different things, you have to try single grain whiskey. But as I say, it's kind of a new kid on the block, and a lot of people won't be familiar with it. But it is it's another way for distilleries to put out a different product. Um, you can get reasonably good cask finished whiskies at a reasonable price. And that's that's essentially what I see single grain 
is being about, you know. And we're getting comments in from all over the world at the minute, uh, uh, Marty. Uh, Nick Ryan says the texture is also different on uh, the single grain. H how does how does that come about? Surely, if the process was continuous, th you'd think it would be even smoother. I don't. I don't like the word smooth, Justin. If I'm totally honest, um, smooth, smooth to me implies, or people, people, <laughs> when when you use the word smooth. It implies something's rough if it's not smooth. Do you, do you understand? <laughs> uh, it's to do with mouthfeel. Green whiskies tend to be an awful lot lighter um, in mouthfeel. They don't have an awful lot of that oily, uh, sort of phenoly type stuff where you, where you get, sometimes you put a whiskey in your mouth and it's got that very sort of viscous, thick taste and it coats your mouth. You won't get that with green whiskies because it's, it's when it comes off the still, it's so full of alcohol that they, they have to water it down. They water it down anyway, but it just doesn't have that oily texture to it. This, it's in some ways, green whiskies. You'll you'll read this, and some some it's partially true. Green whiskey was the the the, the death knell of Irish whiskies back in the day. Uh, the reason being, lots of the Irish distilleries didn't actually see think it, it was whiskey. They they thought it was was wasn't actually proper spirit because it didn't have that oily, lovely, deep, rich, complex flavour. They thought it was cheating essentially. The Scottish industry, however, had no qualms about it, and they adopted it quite quickly. Now, some of the Irish distilleries did adopt um, column still whiskey, Dunville's being. The, the the big one and they actually when they closed in the 1930s they were one of the Irish distilleries that were actually still making a lot of money and one of the revenue streams that they had was they were selling green whiskey to the Scottish distilleries for them to make up blended whiskey which we'll get to uh, forthwith but right they, 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 listen we, we, we've re, people have read reaction things tonight this is this is fantastic uh <laughs> let me see uh we're, we're being told where exactly uh where Linlithgow is it was the <laughs> the birth the birthplace of uh Mary Queen of Scots there you uh, go right so, so you're bound to have been there Marty I've been I've been past it many 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 times. I just uh, I just never noticed. <laughs> Shall we say that? Pretty remiss of me. Um, like, there's John, a, there's a castle in Linlithgow. Is there Linlithgow Castle? Is that saying right? Uh, there's definitely one in Stirling. I've been in Stirling Castle on tour, but uh, uh, John Connolly is saying that he is uh, thank you for the suggestion, and he's just bought uh, from Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, his first experience of Irish green. There you go. What do you think of that? I tell you, we should have we should have an Amazon endorsement channel on this. We, <laughs> we'd be making twelve p already. I, well, all I will say is, I, I do buy stuff from Amazon. Obviously, uh, whiskey from Amazon as well. But do go for the local guys as well. There's there's plenty of online local guys. Irish malts, um, wine pegs, sipsters. You know, there's plenty of local guys selling stuff and. And certainly at this time, they need as much help as possible, you know. Well, a lot of them actually probably are the suppliers via Amazon. Now, uh, John is saying that his first uh, experience was green or uh, eight-year-old. Uh, not as an eight-year-old, I might say, because you, you have to be over 21 to watch this channel in the United States of America, because I've clicked not for children, mm. babies. All right? All right? Uh, yeah. Now, uh, other people have got in touch tonight and said other things. Uh, it's coming on Monday, but Alistair Minnis was asking, what is a good level, uh, entry level pot still? What's a good entry level in that? You would have to say um, Red Breast, Red Breast 12. Um, Red Breast 12 is fabulous whiskey. It's a pot still whiskey. It's one of the premium ones. Um, you can get it. Real, readily available in, in all the, the the big supermarkets if you want to go that way. Um, it's I think the last time I saw it, it was about forty pounds a bottle, Red Breast Twelve. Um, 
and really fabulous quality. You can take your time over it, sip over it. Um, you can you can play about with it a little bit. You can put a little bit, tiny little bit of water, no more than no more than a teaspoon. Um, play with it. It's very approachable, very drinkable. Um, you would you you would rec- you would you would like it. <laughs> but I guess it's one of those ones that pretty much everybody as a default setting is going to like red bread well it's a superb quality whiskey that would be that would be one of the, the, the big if you want to try something a little different um i would i would suggest trying uh green spot um and if you want a really really good quality whiskey pot still whiskey for not huge amount of money certainly in terms of of I mean, whiskey can go for thousands of pounds a bottle. Um, if you want to go for uh, something, push it out. Try Redbreast Twenty One. It's fabulous stuff. It's amazing. About one hundred and forty pound a bottle. But special occasion whiskey. This is not a, a drink half a bottle a night stuff. You know. <laughs> no. We we wish if we won the lottery, I'm I'm sure we'd be toasted up with something like that. There. We, we, are, we could we could we could indeed we could indeed so. Yeah, Green's brought a red red breast twenty one as something different, or if you want to push the boat by it. But red breast twelve, fabulous, just to try. So, uh, if people want to get in touch with you during the week, uh, the best way to go about it is uh, through Ushki Tours uh, on uh, Twitter, and you can get us on Irish Whiskey Review on uh, the internet on. Uh, Facebook, it's ulsterwhiskey.com. Simple as that. Now, we've run through single malt tonight. Uh, we've given some great suggestions there. We've run mm-hmm. through single pot still uh, in the past uh, sort of 40 minutes already of gone, Marty. Time flies when you have fun. We're like 40 minutes in tonight, Marty. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And uh, what is that? Yep. Um, You've got to go in five minutes, have you? No, I've got five more, five more whiskey styles to tell you. You've got five more whiskey styles to go. We've we've done single cast, we've done single grain. I tell you what, folks, that's it for the recaps tonight. What you'll have to do is you'll have to rewind the thing when we get to the end of it because I like it to be in, under an hour because when I share it in other platforms, it can only be an hour long. That's why. All right. Well, I, I'm just catching a look at myself here. I, I look embarrassed. I'm actually, I'm actually going that red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've, we've done four and you've got five more to go let, let, let's hit us with the next one what is it the next one i'm going to do is blend blend at one i touched on it earlier so this is jj Corey uh blend it this is the gale okay now blend it whiskies are basically a mix of anything you can have uh a, a, a green whiskey Add it into a, a single malt or a malt whiskey, take single malt, into a malt whiskey, make up your green. Now it can come from multiple distilleries, it can come from multiple mash bills, all that kind of stuff. So it's a blended whiskey. So, for example, Bushmills Original, JJ Corey, um, they're very much seen as being the, the, the entry level. And in some ways, this isn't justified uh, that it's, it's a it's not a purist whiskey. People get very shirty about this and they get very uptight. It's not a single malt. It's not a single Blended whiskies give blenders much more scope. You can go to multiple distilleries, pick up really, really good casks of whiskey and blend them up to make what you think is the best whiskey you can put in a glass. You could have... Um, Malted whiskey, you know, malt whiskey from multiple distilleries, blend it up to make it what you think is the signature of the best uh, whiskey you can produce. But it still has to be called a blend. Uh, purists kind of get a bit sure about it and they think, you know, blend it's an inferior product, but that doesn't really do it justice. A, a blender has much more scope. He's not limited by one signature style. So he can come up with Johnny Walker, for example. Um, you know, there's lots of high end blends, lots of blends that can be extremely expensive. Uh, and and what you're getting, the quality of what you're getting, can be reflected in the price. The reason you have 
the bad reputation in some ways of blend up whiskies is they'll take the the really flavoursome malt whiskey from the little pot stills, put in green whiskey and make a, a much cheaper product. But in some ways it doesn't necessarily do it justice. Blended whiskies are 90 odd percent, 90 percent plus of the market. These are the most popular whiskies you can buy. Um, so if you went to a supermarket, you've white and Mackay and uh, Bells and, and Teacher and all of these. These are all blends. And it was obviously they're Scottish blends, but the, the fact that people will buy entry level, if you like, whiskies, that's that's where the bulk is. It's really, really an art. Uh, it's it's something that, in some ways, is is it's viewed upon a blend of whiskies is not as good as a single malt. I I would tend to disagree. I think if you have a blender who's on his game, this this brand JJ Corey, they are bringing out some really nice stuff. This this is quite good. This is quite good stuff. You know so. Don't write off blended whiskey because you you think it's the cheap stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, right, right. Now Nick Ryan saying he's agreeing with you. He's saying blending is really an art. Uh, it's key is consistency and it's complexity. I mean, how how do they manage to get it the same twice in a row? Well, this this is it. I mean, if you consider what a blender's job is, a blender's job is you take all of these variable products. You know, you. No, no barrel of whiskey is the same. I, I mean, it's just not. They, they're very similar, but they're because you're using natural products and aged over time. If you, it's going to always taste slightly different. So a blender's art and the blend. I always see a distiller as being the scientist behind the thing. He's the guy who who does the distilling and all the sciencey bit. You know, it has to be cut at the right time and all that. The blender's really the artist of the, the, the thing. You know. They, they have to have in their head all oh, what I want this end product to be. So I have to keep where they are, where am I sourcing my product to get it to what I need to be. It's, I take my hat off to them because I think it's what they do is fabulous. I mean, it's, it's a, a, a tough job, really tough job. Right. So that, that wraps it up for about blended. What's next tonight? Blended. Now we're going, we're going overseas. Okay. We're going to go to, Bourbon, okay. So this is a bourbon. This is a small batch. Bourbon. Bourbon is an American whiskey, obviously, but it doesn't have to be made. Uh, it can be made anywhere in the US. It just has to follow uh, certain uh, production methods, okay. Now it has to be. It's made with corn, and the reason is when lots of the. the, the the, the settlers who actually left from, from Ireland, uh, they went across to, to the US, couldn't really grow barley where they were, uh, so they grew corn and they made corn whiskey, corn liquor, or whatever it is you want to call it over there. Now it has to be 51% uh, corn mash bill, and then you can make it up with other stuff as well. And it has to be aged in a charred oak cask, a new charred oak cask. What I mean by that is they, they burn the inside of the of the cask and the charcoal acts really as a, as a charcoal filter and it takes away some of the the, 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 the unpleasant stuff that you get in, in whiskey. So some of the, the less desirable congeners, the flavour compounds, if you like. Um, how they discovered the charring effect it's reckoned that what happened was casks made from oak uh, were reused for various purposes. Uh, so if you were putting herring, for example, into a cask, into a wooden cask barrel, you were shipping them about. Well, no one wanted whiskey that tasted like fish. So what they did was <laughs> they burnt the inside of it. They burnt the inside of it to take away that thing. And then they put whiskey in and discovered that it gave it a... a, a purified it and it gave it a real different flavour and texture. So bourbon can be made all over. Um Jim Beam, etc, etc. These are bourbon. This is I, I'm not a huge bourbon fan, if I'm honest. It's a little too sweet for me. It tends to have that sort of sickly sweet flavour. Uh certainly at the, at the level. 
if you go for something that's a bit higher in 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 uh, ABV, for example, Wild Turkey One Hundred One, the alcohol level is quite high, and it cuts through that sort of sickly sweet thing that I not overly keen on. This, however, is quite good. That's seventeen ninety two. Um, it's it's yeah. It's, this isn't just sweet. It's, it's still sweet, but it's not sickly sweet. I wonder what the uh, the viewers think. Uh, Nick, uh, John, uh, Trevor, uh, Alistair, do you, uh, I use a fan of bourbon? Uh, probably, if anybody in England's watching, they probably think it's a biscuit they dunk in their tea. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of bourbons. I'm totally honest. The higher end stuff's not so bad because it's not doesn't have that sort of saccharine sweetness, you know. So, uh, after Bourbon, where are we going to go now? Well, we're going to stay in the US. Now, lots of people think um, Jack Daniels is a bourbon, but it's wow. not. It states quite clearly on the bottle that it's not a bourbon, that it's a Tennessee whiskey. And there is a difference, okay? I should. I, I thought I had a bottle of Jack Daniels in, in, in my... But you thing. drunk it. Well, it possibly did, but uh, somebody else probably has pilfered it on me. that much more likely? <laughs> now, Tennessee whiskies do a, a different production method. Um, Jack Daniels, for example, uses the, the sour mash method. And what that means is when they ferment their, 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 their liquor before it gets distilled, the previous day's fermented um, wort and stuff, they lift, they lift some of that out and put it into today's batch. So the previous day to bring over, and that's really to aid the fermentation to make to make your 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 wort, to make your beer before you go and get it distilled. So they do that. Then they have they, they use uh, a filtration method where they put it through a, a bed of charcoal and it gets dripped through a, a bed of charcoal about 10 feet deep charred maple um, to, to basically, if you like, start the the, the ferment or the, the aging process as it goes through, okay? And so as it goes through that, then that, that adds in flavour, takes away the bad flavours, if you like, probably a better way of putting it. Um, so that's a Tennessee whiskey. And it's so Jack Daniels is not a bourbon, okay? Uh, there's there is another one, uh, George Dickel is another Tennessee whiskey. But that's a that's a, a very much a specific whiskey to the states, um, and it would be it would be recognized. This, so. this isn't your bottle of Jack Daniels, is it, Marty? What is, is that your bottle of Jack Daniels? No, all right. I don't have. I've, 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 I seem to have drunk all the Jack Daniels or else someone else. Has. Maybe, maybe this is it in my house. Is it? No. It could very well be, or, <laughs> no. or, or it could be the Exorcist has took it. <laughs> he, he, maybe, he maybe has. He maybe has. No. Uh, so listen, I, you live and learn every day. Now this is this is what some people are saying. Yeah. Uh, Alistair Minnis says he, he says he loves the occasional wild turkey with loads of ice. Yeah. And of course, Trevor Watson saying the same. Wild turkey uh, is a yes with me. Uh, John Connolly is saying uh, he likes uh, Jack's single bar barrel. Yeah. Uh, Julie Mason is saying she's agreeing with you. She's saying uh, Tennessee whiskey, bourbon, not so much. There you go. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, what I would say is wild turkey. Um, we had by the Rippey family in Tyrone, Kentucky. Uh, basically because their original family basically came from, from this part of the world. And uh, that's why they went over there. So Wild Turkey has a very a good connection with uh, uh, Ulster. So UlsterWhiskey.com, see? There we go. We've got a big, a big long one in here. I, I'm not sure I can fit it all. I can fit it all on the screen tonight. For some reason, it's working. Uh, Nick Ryan says it's it's an interesting that uh, I'm in the southern states with dry environment, which results in the AVB increase in the cast. You can find 
bourbon and Tennessee whiskey, quite dry due to the virgin wood extraction. So there you go. Get a bit of insight there. Yeah, this this is a key thing. Um, lots of Irish whiskies and, and Scotch whiskies, you'll see that it's aged in bourbon, ex-bourbon barrels. Bourbon has to be aged in virgin oak. The barrels can only be used once. So you imagine... Do you imagine the amount that the, the, the likes of Jim Beam are going to be going through? Uh, the casks, you can only use them once. So what they do is they sell them on. And, and it can be, in some way, there's lots of people get very, uh, shall we say, um, high and mighty about uh, the fact that Irish and Scotch whiskies aged for longer than, than uh, American whiskies. Uh, some American whiskies only have to be aged in a cask for one year, but uh, but you have to remember a couple of years in a much warmer environment means that the, the it's actually getting more and more into the wood, and that the charring effect actually has more of an effect on it anyway. So it, it would it would age quicker uh, in that environment than it would say in, in the Highlands of Scotland, for example. You know? So yeah, that that's a good point. Yeah. So where are we heading next? We've still have quite a few to run through tonight, don't we? Well, we have another two. Um, we're going to head a little bit north, and we're going to go to Canada. Cranwell. Canada has a very good whiskey tradition. Uh, lots of what they would do, they typically use blends um, an awful lot more, and they tend to have... Um, a lot of them will use rye and stuff in it as well, so it's a bit more peppery. Uh, it's quite, it's always quite light, but a Canadian style whiskey. One thing about um, Canadian whiskies that make it slightly different, well, slightly different from the rest so far, is that they can add flavorings. Okay, by law they can add nine point zero nine percent flavoring, so long as it's another aged spirit. So you could have a Canadian whiskey that is cut in with um, Jameson or cognac or or anything else. So by definition, lots of these wouldn't necessarily be classified as. You couldn't have a Scotch whiskey, for example, that's got that has Scotch whiskey written on it and had had. Bushmills on it. That, that just wouldn't be allowed. That would be, be, be breaking the, the trade subscription act. But in Canada, you can have almost ten percent of of a flavouring from basically anywhere. So, so you, you could basically have uh, Canadian with maple syrup. Then it has to be an aged spirit. So it right. would have, it'd have to be. It could be. You could put in rum uh, if you like. You could put in. You know. You could put in. Uh, an aged drum. It's not like not a ready-made cocktail, then, Marty. I kind, I kind of. It, it, I mean, for 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 lots of people who would be purists, it wouldn't be. The people would find that really, really, really strange. But um, that that's what they're allowed to do. Now, Canadian whiskies tend to be very light, and they tend to they tend to take. I find that they take um, certain uh, like ice and stuff probably slightly better than some of the, the other ones. Um, they're okay. They're okay, but they wouldn't necessarily appeal to to whiskey nerds, Canadian whiskies, you know. Okay, and we've one final one to go through tonight, and the final five minutes of show. Anybody would think we've rehearsed this multiple times beforehand. Yeah, but our preparation tends to be right. We're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just briefly touch on Japanese whiskey. I was asked about this the other day. Japanese whiskey tends to be very good. However, things are changing in Japanese whiskey circles. Japanese whiskey doesn't really have any definitions. So it's kind of like the Wild West out there at the minute. For example, Nika, uh, a, a, another Japanese uh, whiskey brand, own the Ben Nevis distillery. And what they do is they take scotch, they make, a, they make scotch whiskey, ship it over to Japan, put it into their bottles, and call it Japanese whiskey. Now, they're allowed to do this because 
it's basically not really regulated as much as any of the other whiskey regions. Um, and lots of people are beginning to go, mm, this is not great. Uh, this is not a good practice. So Japanese whiskey does tend to be very good quality, and I'm not taking that away from it. Um, this is really, this, this is Suntory Toki. This is an awful lot cheaper than, than it used to be, that, or Suntory. Um, and people are beginning to get a little bit, mm, you don't really know what you're getting. You're not really getting the craft. You're not really getting um, what what you would consider to be a premium thing from Scotland, for example, or, or Ireland. So I just put Japanese in there just to let people know that things in Japan are sort of changing and you can see a decline in quality and, and in respect, if you like, uh, as well. So that's it, it's this, all of the, 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 the whiskey styles, if you like, um, wrapped up as much as I can. Is that down to money? Is that accountants running things in Japan? Is that money? Well, the thing about it is lots of people thought Japanese whiskey really, really good, so they wanted it um, uh, 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 they thought it was really good, but it was quite expensive. So they they wanted to meet the demand and and try and get a little bit of the supply. So they've, since they're not really as heavily regulated as certainly a Scotch or Irish whiskey would be, that's really where they've ended up now. So there you go. All right. Well, uh, that's been a fascinating insight to whiskey styles uh, this week again. Uh, I've been Justin McCartney. He's been Marty McCauley. Thank you, everyone, for uh, running with us tonight. Uh, we've got about three minutes left, Marty. You're going to have a wee drop of the Japanese stuff, are you? Yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to the land of the rising sun here. Uh, I, I've got plenty of sun today, so I might as well finish it off <laughs> in, the, in the style to which I've become accustomed. Um, I've got my Corona cut. <laughs> I got the Corona cut during the week, um, basically buzz cut, like, since there's no, no hairdressers open to us. So I <laughs> everybody go for. I, I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same. So we had single malt uh, tonight. We had uh, – I want you to – give me your favourite one when we run down them. Single malt. My favourite single malt? Yeah. Um, currently at the minute, probably... Um, oh, you've put me in the spot now. Um, my favourite single malt at the minute, probably the Dunville's cask strength. Okay. Your, sing your favourite single pot still? My favourite pot still whiskey would probably be... Red breast twelve cask strength is exceptionally good. Um, you put me on the spot. It's kind of hard. It's like asking who's your favourite child. You know. Um, I know. I know. I know. You should never have one. Uh, no. Your your favourite single cast? Oh, oh um, I'll go with the Don. I'll go with the Dunvilles, uh single cask um, cask strength. Yeah, it's fabulous. Okay. Fabulous. Your fav Your favourite single grain. Um, probably one of the tailing, the tailing single grain. That's okay. Quality. Yeah. Uh, your favourite blended? Um, Middleton, very rare. And do we have another? Your favourite bourbon? Um, probably probably that seventeen ninety three small batch. Uh, that's okay. Very, um, yeah. Your favourite Tennessee? I'll just go. Jack Daniels is hard to beat. I mean, it's 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 a fabulous product, um, and and it's it's one of those ones. I wouldn't you don't drink Jack Daniels really straight. You probably drink it with a coke or something. But it, it yeah. serves a purpose. It's good, and it's, there's nothing wrong with it. And your favorite Canadian Crown Royal. Uh, if I'm totally honest, I don't know enough about Canadian whiskies because it's just not the whole. Okay. It doesn't necessarily appeal to me in a huge huge way, you know. And your favourite Japanese then? Uh, um, I, I, off the top of my head, I can't think. Um, I tried a Yamazaki a while ago. I'm trying to think what age it was. I think it was an 18. And it was, it's fabulous stuff. There's lots of good Japanese whiskies. Uh, Nika from the Barrel is a really good one too. Um, and I know I was saying about it, them being uh, from... The Ben Nevis distillery, but it doesn't take away from the fact that taste-wise, it's, it's very good taste. But in terms of an experience, 
it's not necessarily what you you would want from a a a, a whiskey experience if you know what I mean. My favourite would be that girl from Lost in Translation. She would be my favourite. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've crossed, the, we've crossed the line there, Justin. We've crossed the line. <laughs> we've crossed the line. Uh, it's, it's, it's after 10 o'clock. Anyway, we're all right. We're, we're going to wrap up now. Uh, a couple of last-minute questions coming in. We're getting the uh, great evening. Thank you very much from Trevor. Uh, from Trevor. We're getting... Yep, we're getting in from uh, Nick Ryan. Uh, the Japanese are not as cooperative of the Scottish and Irish distilleries, so they have to produce lots of variations or source from elsewhere. Yeah, this this is very true. They are they they, they they've, I think they've kind of they've got to a point where they've kind of tied themselves up a little bit and not um, they, they they're not selling to each other. They're I don't know. It seems to me, from the outside looking, and it seems a bit of a mess. The Japanese, um, but right, I, again, it's it's one of those things that they have. They're, they're sourcing it from other stuff. You know? Okay, uh, again, Julie Mason saying, "Cheers, Marty. You've such a wealth of whiskey knowledge, and love the history you share. All in a brilliant manner. Can't wait for the next show. It'll be uh, yes, seven days away next Saturday night, unless." <laughs> We win the lottery between then and now. Before uh, I actually turn into a strip of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's supposed to be good all this week. I, I, I walked 10 miles today. Uh, John Connolly is saying, a fantastic chance. First giant, I've joined AusterWhiskey.com. Thanks for joining us, John. Remember to comment, like, and share. Tell all your friends. We'll put the notification up during the week. We've no idea what next week's going to be about yet. Uh, Nick Ryan is saying, very uh, great tasting. Really enjoyed it. Okay. Enjoy. Uh, Frank is saying, Frank Heron is another great show tonight. Uh, many uh, thanks, guys. And we've got two more questions here. John Connolly says, he's getting his money's worth tonight, John Connolly. What is your de desert island whiskey? Um, one served by your wee Japanese woman from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. And final question tonight is... Uh, Alistair goes to Alistair Minnis. Thoughts on English Welsh distilleries? Ah, no. Um, I, I, um, there's English distilleries. There's a few of them cropping up now. Um, if you go into Marks and Spencers, for example, they sell St George's whiskey. Yeah. Um, what, what's, what's the saying? If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> I tell, I tell you what, I tell you what, shall we leave it there, Marty, shall we? And we'll, well, we'll, well, we'll, Penderen, uh, I stayed recently in uh, Brown's Hotel in Larne, which is the was the, the hometown of the, the wonderful Dylan Thomas, and it's owned by the same guy who produces um, Penderen whiskey, and I, I got a chance to taste a, a number of the range. It's quite good, it's quite good. Um, probably needs a bit more age to it, but uh, Penderen, yeah, spot on. English stuff. Moving on. <laughs> Listen, we've got the decanter for you. I wanted to ask you this. I don't yeah. know whether you can see it on screen or not. Can you see that decanter? I can can you? Yes. Do, do, do you like that decanter? Uh, it's not subtle, Justin, is how I would put that. You know? It's <laughs> <laughs> Should you decant your whiskey? That's what we're going to leave it with. Should you decant it? Uh, you should always have it in a, in a decent glass. And sit over it, not go too mad with it. Uh, decent quality whiskey should not be drank very quick. Um, I normally have a, I normally have a tin of Guinness, if I'm totally honest, or or a beer, and let the whiskey just do its thing in the glass, and it will totally change flavour um, in, in in a little period. And I, so yes, you do, but you do it in the glass. Don't decant it into uh, big decanters. It's quite all right when it's a little bottle. All right. Uh, thanks very much, guys, for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for sharing. And uh, we'll see you next week. I'll speak to you before then. Any ideas what we're going to do next week, Marty? Uh, no. <laughs> In a word, no. I, I tell you what, that was a fascinating insight this week. Uh, you know, we've been in double figures, viewers. Uh, you know, there was... Uh, two, three thousand people watched it last week and the week before. Uh, long may it continue. Enjoy. Bottoms up. Take care. Good guys. night. We'll see you.